Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be returning back to Ultima Thule and the New Horizons mission. This is um, Eyes on the Solar System by NASA, this is a free app that allows you to see pretty much everything there is to know about both the Ultima Thule and the New Horizons mission that's going to pass by any second now because I decelerated time a little bit. Where is it? Here it is, here it comes. So. What are we talking about? Now, if you've been following the story, you probably already know that even though we assume that this is the shape that Ultima Thule had, turns out that we may have actually been wrong. The new um, analysis of pictures from the New Horizons mission actually shows the shape in the following way. So this is what it looks like from the front, but this is what it looks like from the side. And the way that this was determined is by essentially looking at the occultations of various stars. Well, so there's a star right there. And as you pass uh, here on the side, you actually see that the star comes out on the other side. But when they did this with the New Horizons mission, this was a lot flatter than it looks here. And so they realized that um, this shape must be basically like this. It's a kind of a pancake with a kind of a walnut. Now, this created a lot more questions than it created answers. As a matter of fact, a lot of new papers are buzzing with, well, so what's happening here? What's going on? And um, I think Scott Manley recently made a video where he kind of uh, related this to the unusual shapes of various moons of Saturn that actually have somewhat interesting ravioli-like shapes that could be compared to, well, this. Now, um, in the case of Saturn, the reason why we have these unusual shapes, for the most part, is because there's a lot of material available in the ring of Saturn, and there are a lot of collisions that happen between objects. And in most cases, like for example, Atlas here, um, received a head-on collision that um, had two objects that eventually created a kind of a pancake. Now, I went around looking for similar studies that maybe analyze this in some other detail, and I actually found a researcher that seems to specialize in just that. This researcher right here from the University of Bern actually studied the composition and structure of the comet uh, 67P, also known as Chirumov gerasimenko that was in the news a few years ago, and he used the computer simulations to try to see um, what would happen to the cometary composition and co cometary structure with time. And he basically did a pretty good job simulating and also analyzing the evolution of the shape of uh, 67P comet and seeing how eventually it's actually going to turn into something that resembles this walnut right here. And um, you can actually kind of relate to what's happening with this comet to what may have happened to the Ultima Thule over time. Now, what does this actually imply and what can we uh, draw in terms of conclusions based on this study versus what we have here? So it seems that there were two large objects that eventually received a very slow but head-on collision that we're going to try to simulate right here with two series. And when this collision occurred, um, basically they turn into a kind of a pancake. And this was mostly because this was head-on. It was also very, very slow in terms of um, actual collision speed. And uh, over time, the gravity of two objects squeezed them both together, producing this shape. And it's very similar to how this shape was formed as well, probably. And then these uh, two objects also combined with one another. And this may have actually happened only like a billion years uh, or so ago, or even before that, suggesting that um, there's actually still quite a lot of collisions happening in this region of space that is a lot uh, slower and a lot less energetic compared to the collisions we receive in the inner solar system. So all of the collisions here will most likely end up creating something that kind of looks like this. Uh, it's, it's a slow procedural collision that eventually squeezes the object into this kind of a unusual walnut shape. Now, this is probably what's going to happen to these two pieces of Ultima Thule as well, as they come closer and closer together, and as their gravity kind of squeezes them together again. And I'm pretty sure that this particular scientist behind the paper that you can find in the description below is going to be at the forefront of essentially simulating the um, progression of Ultima Thule and what it's going to look like eventually after a few million to a few billion years from now. Now, um, overall, it's actually 
it's quite interesting how we were able to discover that this is not a snowman, not two spherical objects, but two relatively flat pancake objects that hopefully this simulation will change eventually. But at the same time, it did actually raise a lot of questions. How did this happen and what does it mean to all of the theories that we had about the creation of the solar system? Now, I personally don't think that it changes much. It just shows us that these collisions do occur really far away from the sun. And these collisions happen very slowly, very, very methodically, and eventually result in these pancake-like objects, similar to kind of what we have around Saturn. But all in all, though, it's definitely very exciting, very interesting. And I'm looking forward to hearing more suggestions from you guys in the comments below, but also looking forward to a lot more studies in the future that will hopefully once and for all kind of tell us what's really happening with these ravioli-like objects and how Ultima Thule was able to achieve such an unusual, unique, and very difficult to explain shape. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the papers I mentioned in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who you think will enjoy watching space and science videos and wants to learn through video games. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.